I have some wonderful news to share. I have an unboxing uh, here, and uh, the unboxing does not come from a Chanel uh, beauty boutique or perfume boutique. I wish it would, or I wish it I wish it did come from there, but it comes from a secondhand website. Um, I just have it in the little bag to protect the box that it came in. I got really lucky this time around uh, because, um, check this out. I hunted down a ginormous, well, silver-lined box of Eau de Parfum Cristal. And this is apparently, the only thing it's missing is the outer sleeve with all the information like, uh, you know, alcohol, concentration, perfume, uh, what have you. So um, the outer sleeve is missing, but it is still brand new in this gorgeous container. And this is the Eau de Parfum first release. Now, officially it was released in 1993. Jacques Polge is the nose behind Cristal Eau de Parfum, while Henri Robert is the nose behind Cristal Eau de Toilette. So Cristal Eau de Toilette came out in the early 70s, and then the Eau de Parfum came out in the 90s. It's a slightly softer, tamer version of Cristal. Uh, however, I never saw this particular packaging before. Um, so it was released in 1993, but according to the batch code on this little baby, which we're going to see soon, this one was released in December. The batch is from December of 1992, which makes this bottle the first batch ever made of Cristal Eau de Parfum. Let that sink in for a minute, which also makes sense then to have it in this box because as Chanel launched this brand new uh, concentration of Cristal, you know, they've definitely pushed it out with a special packaging. I've never seen Chanel package Cristal like this before. So this is the sides, right? It's all silver, reflecting light. The back is white. And then the front has the bottom. Oh, it has a code. On this side, 035190, that's their product code. Right there. Hard to see, a little bit of a fingerprint magnet. And then we have uh, Eau de Parfum etched in there in black, Cristal in silver, Chanel embossed in black, and Paris also embossed in black. And as you can see, if we turn it around, the Cristal turns from a dark color to that light reflecting, gorgeous silver. Um, and then when you open it up, I know this is crazy, what a huge box you might think, what's inside, what's inside? <laughs> Here it goes. This is the perfume inside. I know it takes up, it, it's a 75 milliliter bottle, so it's, it's a splash bottle. Um, but uh, it takes up this huge space, but in reality, it's just a cardboard box with beautiful tape, though. There's uh, the tape that they used to, to bond this is very, very sturdy, high quality. And let's take it out of its nesting place. Looking inside of the box, looks awesome inside. <laughs> This is the first time I ever saw this container, by the way. So, wow. Oh, so exciting. So, Eau de Parfum Cristal, first edition in the splash bottle. This is how they designed originally the bottles of Cristal. The twist stopper has an etched in double C logo painted in white. And then... The bottle has a silver printing all over it. Eau de Parfum Cristal Chanel Paris, 80% uh, VOL or alcohol percentage right at the bottom of the bottle. And then at the bottom, bottom, we have the Chanel 75 ml or 2.5 fluid ounces inscription. This thing is gorgeous. Now, it's brand new. It has not been used since it was made in December of 1992. 
So you do the math. How old is this thing now? 30 years old? <laughs> is it? Oh my God. Wait a minute. No. 2002, 2002. Yeah, it's 31 years old. This perfume has never been used in 31 years, which is insane to think about. So we're going to open it together now. Uh, I do have for comparison purposes uh, the Cristal Eau de Parfum current formula. This is the 100 also fingerprint magnet. We can polish it a little bit. So it, it's a little bit more presentable. But we have the 100 milliliter Cristal Eau de Parfum in the current formulation. However, uh, this one is batch code 4701. So it is a couple of years old because I'm saying this because the current version of Cristal Eau de Parfum doesn't have silver lines going around the edges of the stopper. Instead, it's full on black. I guess Chanel is saving money there as well. They're not spending that money to paint these lines in silver anymore. So the stopper is fully black, which is really sad. Um, but we do have the current ish formula of Cristal Eau de Parfum. It's still in production, albeit not sold very often. It's almost never really um, sold. Now, I've been talking to a sales associate of mine, a Chanel sales associate from the beauty boutique, and she did reveal to me, she said, you know, unfortunately, Cristal and also Chanel number no. 19, they don't sell that much. And it's really, really sad. These are gorgeous perfumes, which makes me really worried and this is also one of the reasons I want to make this video to raise awareness about this gorgeous perfume. It's a beautiful, beautiful crystalline green Shepra. And I know Shepras are not that popular nowadays, but uh, we should raise awareness about them because if this one doesn't sell and if it keeps selling less and less, Chanel is probably going to discontinue it sooner or later. So then we have the Eau de Toilette concentration, which has oak moss and tree moss listed in it. And then we have the Cristal Auvert, which is one of the best flankers ever made, uh, really, mm, of any perfume, because it is different enough to be its own creation, but it's also, it still has a reminiscence, like a DNA reminiscence of the original Cristal. Really, really amazing. So we have all of these comparisons. So these three are available still. Chanel, in some countries, they sell all three. In other countries, mm, you can probably only find, I think, the Eau de Parfum still in some countries. And in some countries, I think you can only find Cristal Auvert not the other two. So, but everything I say in this video is, is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's alleged. While you're at it, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Deco All Spelled Together for extra perks. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. So I have my code chatters on the sidebar. Uh, we are unboxing this together. So, yay. Thumb up the live or thumb up the video. If you're enjoying it, it means the world to the channel. It helps the channel out a lot. It means the world to me. So thumb up the video and uh, subscribe. All right, let's get to this little beauty here. I'm kind of a little bit hesitant to use it. Uh, I'm a bit scared because obviously this thing is a historic. It, it's like there's not many of these left in the world that haven't been opened. I don't think so. So let's sniff it. Coco Kitty says, Cristal uh, Overt smells amazing. Yeah. Yeah, guys. Oh my God. Okay, wait, there's some juice on it already perfect let me just take that let me dab that off so i don't touch the interior liquid oh it is so crystalline buttery clean it's so focused it's the top notes are there, you guys. The, the, the top notes have not um, withered at all. 
at all. This thing has been preserved for the gods. It's like brand new age. I mean, it's 31 years old, which also brings us to proving the point that Perfumes don't necessarily expire after two or three years of using them. It's all about how you store them. And also, you know, how the manufacturers really want to utilize certain ingredients to preserve perfumes. You know, I think a lot of these perfume houses are trying to change um, the structure of their perfume so that they do go bad after a shorter period of time so that you have to keep buying them over and over and over again. They're making them smell less so that you have to keep reapplying, using them up quicker, hence having to buy them over and over again. IFRA regulations don't let you use as much oak moss uh, as was in, get, allowed in the past and what have you. This thing is an oak moss bomb, used to be in the 90s. Nowadays, not so much so, but oak moss is also a preservative. It preserves, it, it's a fixative it preserves the stability of the perfume. So the fact that this has oak moss in it also means that this thing will be preserved longer. So 31 years after it was produced, by the way, the batch code is 110, uh, sorry, 1120. That's the batch code right here in the back bottom. 1120. These code numbers repeat every eight years or so. So if you go back, if you backtrack eight years, eight years, eight years, it's basically December of 1992 is when this one was uh, manufactured. And then the release was in 1993, like early 1993. So this one was produced in late 1992 and then was probably released in 1993. Um, it's a divine Shipra Accord. It's floral. It's crystalline. The aldehydes are sparkly, bubbly. It's almost like champagne, but there is a buttery quality to the Eau de Parfum, which the Eau de Toilette doesn't really have because the Eau de Toilette, you know, is more of a dry Shipra. This one is supposed to represent, as per Henri Robert, uh, it was the last perfume he did for Chanel, right? This one is supposed to represent Coco Chanel in her later years. So we're talking the last couple of years of Coco's life before she passed away. So she was a chain smoker. She, you know, had issues with morphine addiction. She had a lot of stuff going around in her life and uh, she was in a lot of pain often. And she could get snappy uh, with people sometimes. And um, very interesting how Henri Robert... rendered this dry character that has become somewhat bitter in her older age uh, through perfume. Uh, it It's a masterpiece, really, because it is a portrait of Chanel. You know, number 19 is also a Henri Robert fragrance in the Eau de Toilette and Parfum concentration. Not Eau de Parfum. Eau de Parfum is Jacques Paul, but number 19 is also a portrait of Chanel, of Coco, a little bit younger than Cristal. But if you notice, really, 19, Eau de Toilette and Parfum, there's also that galbanum in there, but there's also that tendency towards bitter, towards a ru being rougher around the edges. Uh, it's a masterpiece of a perfume, uh, especially because it mimics who Coco Chanel was. So you want to know how she was? Henri Robert delivered a testament to us. You know, he delivered her character in a bottle. And then especially, now, Cristal was released right after Coco Chanel passed away. But I do believe that she was there while Henri Robert was working on this perfume, and she probably sniffed some iteration of Cristal. But whatever it may be, or however it may be, Henri Robert still delivered a very clear portrait of Coco Chanel in her last years. And if you want to smell the character of Coco right before she passed away in 1971, you sniff Cristal Eau de Toilette. And this is one of the reasons why I say it would be such a loss to history if this perfume were to get discontinued. If Chanel were to discontinue Cristal, Eau de Toilette, it would be 
a huge loss. We, we will, if they discontinue this perfume, we will lose an olfactive trail within the biography of Coco Chanel. We will understand her less if we do not have this perfume anymore. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's very imperative that this perfume remains preserved and still in production, despite the fact, you know, that it's not selling as much. Now, Jacques Polge takes the reins of Chanel perfumes and in the 90s starts kind of revisiting all of these 70s masterpieces, or late 60s and early 70s masterpieces. So he delivers an eau de parfum version of Chanel number no. 19, which is a slightly more tame, sweeter version of Chanel number no. 19. And he also delivers in 1993, Cristal Eau de Parfum. In the first ad campaigns, we see, uh, well, not in the first ones, but in the early, early ad campaigns, we also see Claudia Schiffer advertising for Cristal Eau de Parfum. Um, the thing about these revisitations of Jacques Paul's of the two main Henri Robert perfumes for Chanel, being number 19 and uh, Cristal. The interesting thing is how in the 90s, I feel like Jacques tried to re-envision the biography of Coco through perfume. And I'm saying this because number 19 EDP and Cristal EDP are a sweeter it's still a dry perfume, don't get me wrong, but it's a tamer, nicer, slightly friendlier version of Cristal than the Eau de Toilette. The Eau de Toilette is that ashtray, dry, bony chipra. The Eau de Parfum has that buttery accord in it as well. It, it's more tame, you know. Um, Cristal becomes softer. Uh, it becomes more gentle, less sophisticated than the EDT because it, it's not that edgy. It's less edgy. It's more rounded. It's more soft, right? But much more wearable. It becomes more universal, more... It becomes more generic and more mass appealing. And I do believe that Jacques, what he tried to do already in the 90s was rehook. Uh, potential clients of this perfume because by the 90s, Cristal was not as popular anymore, nor was number 19. But by reintroducing them with this new added concentration, being the EDP, he tried to garner kind of new, uh, new clients for the fragrance. Now, it was not a huge success, but what is a huge success to me is, and this is where Chanel really shines and is a true testament to how amazing they are as a perfume house. Many other perfume houses would have discontinued this fragrance immediately. They would not have kept this perfume around for decades. Okay, so the EDT was released in like in the early 70s. So we got 80, 90, you know, like 50, it's 50 years old, some more or less. And they're still making it. You know what that means. That means that they're they're probably not earning a lot of money with this, if any at all. They just keep it in rotation for the heritage, for the fact that it is an important staple in the history of Chanel, and we're going to keep making it. However, and this is one of those rare instances where I tell you, I understand why the prices are going up, because... Yes, all of these luxury brands and not just luxury brands are raising their prices to a point where it's just, it doesn't make any more sense. It's ridiculous and it's embarrassing. Um, but if you consider the fact that this perfume sells almost, you know, almost doesn't sell at all, but Chanel keeps manufacturing it, they're doing it at a loss. Um, you know, if you sell only 15 or 20 of them at one perfume counter in an entire year, then they're going to have to reduce the quantity produced. That's why they're also not distributing it worldwide. Many countries don't even have this concentration available anymore. So then what do you do? What's the next step? Well, well, the next step is, you know, let's cut corners. Let's not paint 
the lid in silver. We're going to save some money there. You see what I mean? Then also, what are they saying? Well, Cristal isn't selling that well. We're losing money there. So who's going to help? Chanel number five. Coco Mademoiselle. Those are the best sellers. All the profits that come in from those perfumes are then kind of, you know, added to aid and help Cristal. Uh, allegedly. Just my speculation, but this is how you would keep doing it. If you want to keep producing a perfume that's not selling, you're going to be losing money. You're going to be hemorrhaging money. So you're going to have to get money in from other places to subsidize the manufacturing of, of this perfume. And here is where I say is a true testament to the grandeur of Chanel when it comes to their perfumes, okay? These two are almost not different from each other at all. Sure, the original OG formula is slightly smoother and more buttery. But for something that is, you know, for a perfume that exists since 30 years, I can tell you that the current version of it, like Chanel did a fine job at preserving the formula. Despite all the IFRA regulations, despite cutting costs here and there, they still managed to deliver a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous current formula for Cristal Eau de Parfum. Because comparing the first release ever to this one, and by the way, before I started this video, a couple of hours ago already, I've sprayed, I've doused myself in the EDP, so I have it on my chest. I only kept this area not sprayed because I knew I was going to kind of, you know, dab this one on here. And they blend beautifully together. Um, many other uh, perfume brands, fashion slash perfume houses, they will cheapen formulas. I'm looking at you, Dior. Dior has butchered poison. Uh, also pure poison. What a travesty especially in the dry down is where you really see how cheap that perfume is nowadays. You know, the opening notes, yeah, it still reminds you of poison or pure poison, but then when the dry down hits, you get those nasty vibes there. That that dry down is not beautiful. Chanel is a master at maintaining quality throughout till the bitter end and even at the dry down, the last last final dry down of the perfume, you're not going to get some cheap smelling ingredient in there. Not at all. Not at all. So that's why I'm saying there's not much more they can do to cut corners with Cristal. You know, fine. They're saving money and not doing the silver edges. <laughs> you know, unless you don't want to start making it smell wrong, which I hope you're not going to do, Chanel. You haven't done it thus far, so I don't think you're going to start now. The only thing to do left is to literally discontinue it. Call a spade a spade. Or to keep, you know, Chanel 5 and Coco Mademoiselle's extra income subsidizing the life of Cristal. Now, as for the smell, it's insanely beautiful um, and insanely well-preserved, this 31-year-old bottle. There's such a depth to this, um, but the name says it, Cristal. It, it, it is a very, very crystalline depth. So it's not muddy, it's not smudged, it's not cavernous in a, in a weird way that you can't really see where you're walking. It's deep under the earth but it's reflecting somehow miraculously light from above. And this entire cavern we're inside is illuminated with the entire spectrum of the rainbow. Even more than a crystal, this almost feels like a diamond. But that light, and this is the beauty of crystal, that light never blinds you. However that crystal is positioned inside of that cavern, the light never bounces off of the crystal to penetrate your eyes and hurt you, to make you go, oh, you know, to blind you for a second. No. 
the masterfulness of this fragrance is that there's always an angle to every crystal so that the light never aggressively hits your eye and it never bounces off of you to kind of blind you. Instead, it's a soft, subdued, blended and balanced light. That's where that buttery accord comes in. So it's never screechy. It never bites you. It never attacks you, but it rather soothes you into enjoying the light refractions of crystals. And that's a beautiful place to be. Like to have a perfume that can actually take you to a place, a cavernous place filled with crystals that are reflecting light from outside in inwards without ever hurting your eyes and making you feel like you're in this soft cocoon. It takes a lot of knowledge and a lot of savoir-faire to construct a perfume like that, to fine-tune it to a point where you understand immediately where it's taking you, but you don't feel like there's an aggression happening. You know, you don't feel like the perfume is attacking you and, and telling you, you got to go in that direction. No, but it's rather a soft, blended, masterfully balanced guide, guiding you through all of these chambers of this cavernous space, which is full of mysteries. Um, and yes, there is darkness there, but the crystals inside that cavern manage, because they're positioned so masterfully, they refract the light to guide you through that cavern. And you are safe. You are safe the entire time. Uh, it's a masterpiece, seriously. Coco Kitty says, like, crystals organically growing on your skin. As scary as that sounds, um, imagining it visually could be awesome <laughs> if it's not considered a disease. Um, yeah, Ciel, the, the bottle is in mint condition after 31 years. This is uh, insane. Abba says, do you think a larger advertising budget and campaign would help Cristal sell in larger quantities? Um, I don't think so. Uh, and I'm and I'm saying this just because uh, we're going through a very interesting and difficult period for perfume history. Mm, people are not very much into special edgy fragrances nowadays, experimental perfumes. Cristal is very experimental, even for today's standards, even though this one is in the EDP form, even though it's 31 years old, it's still super experimental. Um, well, actually, 2023 is the 30th year anniversary of the launch of Cristal Eau de Parfum. So actually, even better for me to make this video to initiate the celebrations. So 2023 is the year we're going to celebrate Cristal Eau de Parfum. Might as well initiate the celebration with this video. And, uh, you know, Subscribe to my channel and also we let me know in the comment section down below if I should do a live stream dedicated to Cristal, like we did last year to celebrate the 100 years of Chanel number no. 22. We did a wonderful live stream. We had a lot of fun together celebrating the birthday of Chanel number no. 22. This year, we could maybe celebrate the 30 years of Cristal EDP. Let me know in the comment section down below if you want that live stream to happen. Um, but... I, I just think that right now, the time, the youth of today is not into Shepra perfumes and into very kind of green, ashy perfumes. So I don't think that this would be a huge success at the moment. I don't think that there's a market for this perfume at the moment. Um, but I also believe that times evolve and uh, trends come back every now and then. And I do believe that there will be again a time when we are more into Shepra's. Bear in mind, however, that this perfume was created in a, in a time where everybody was smoking everywhere, on the streets, in restaurants, in airplanes, at the doctor's office. Oh, yes, people were smoking everywhere. And uh, sheep rub fragrances were also, you know, created to go along with cigarettes. And um, since smoking is practically prohibited almost everywhere nowadays, it's really hard to understand, like younger generations that are growing up without cigarettes, to understand 
why a perfume needs to be so intense. But these perfumes were also battling against smoke, meaning your perfume would need to be strong enough so that you can smell it, even though everybody else in the room is smoking. Because, you know, tobacco and the smell of smoke covers up a lot of things and it sticks to clothes and to the hair and to skin. So perfumes needed to be strong enough to also be smelt despite the fact that everybody was smoking in a room. Perfumes were also used to, certain perfumes were also developed to go well with smoke. Opium by Yves Saint Laurent, for example, is a masterpiece of a perfume that especially if you were to wear it while you go clubbing in the disco era where everybody was smoking and then you're wearing opium, that's when the perfume smells at its best. Nowadays, you know, to wear Cristal without smoking, it's almost like you're missing a part of the experience of the smell of the perfume because the perfume was conceived in an era where smoking was normal. Of course, now it's not good and I'm not saying you should smoke. I'm, don't start smoking. It's bad for your health. Don't smoke. We're just historically analyzing how this perfume functioned back in the day where smoking was allowed everywhere. So a lot of perfumes, and especially Shepra's, really bond well uh, with uh, tobacco, really bond well with the smell of smoke in rooms. Also, imagine being in a room where all the furniture is made out of tweed, or the sofa is covered with a wool or with a boucle, or suede leather. Imagine Coco Chanel's 31 Rue Cambon main salon. The one where she had the suede couch in, the carpets, uh, the Coromandel panels. I mean, and it's the room where she chain smoked all the time. And all the guests and visitors who came to visit her were also chain smokers. So that entire room, the walls, the tapestry, the velvety covered walls because she would cover them with velvet sometimes that entire sofa that beige leather suede soft suede sofa it absorbed the smoke of the cigarettes for years for decades envision 31 rue cambon and then add to that a spray of chanel number 19 chanel number five cristal they combine with that smell in that room. And together, they create the full-bodied experience of this perfume. And they were developed in that era as well. These perfumes were created and conceived in an era where smoking was everywhere. But not, not just that. These perfumes were conceived, well, especially the eau de toilette, was conceived in a time where um, Coco Chanel was smoking. She was a smoker till her dying day. So this was created also for her. And like I said before, as a depiction of her, it works if you envision an ashtray and cigarettes. Then this perfume all of a sudden makes complete sense. So yes, you see, nowadays, where we are not smoking anymore, a lot of the reasoning behind this perfume or justification for this perfume is also lost. A lot of it is also lost because we're missing that element. But at the same time, I don't want to say that uh, this perfume does not have a uh, potential for a life in our times. As a historical document, this perfume is very important to understand Coco Chanel. Very important. And also, as a historical document, this one is very important to understand how the times were in the early 70s when this one was created. As for the 90s, already the conversations were starting to circulate, you know, um, Smoking is not good for you. It's not good for your health. The 90s were the decade where we were about to let go of all of all of those vices. And by the 2000s, then smoking would become illegal everywhere almost. Um, and this is also, I think, with that in mind, 
also why uh, Jacques Polge kind of re-envisioned Cristal for EDP concentration and number 19 for the EDP concentration. They're a little bit more tame. They don't need to fight that smoke anymore as much, you know? So they're going into that user-friendlier, a friendlier user-friendly fragrance direction. And still to this day, Cristal Eau de Parfum is a masterpiece. Now the color is slightly different, but that's just because this bottle is 30 years old. Um, this one is aging really nicely as well, and it will turn that same shade of yellow as the 30-year-old bottle. And like I said before, um, there's not much difference between the two, which is a true testament to how amazing Chanel perfumes are, uh, that they're really trying to preserve this one as long as they can until nobody will want to buy it anymore. So here's hoping that this video is going to uh, inspire somebody out there to at least go and smell it, if not buy it. But let's try to give this fragrance a new life um, before it's gone for good. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Let me also know if anybody else has ever seen this particular packaging for the first ever launch of Cristal Eau de Parfum. And uh, let me know if you have one. And also, if you have this package like for other sizes as well. I'm really curious to know, have they created this box also for the spray version of Cristal Eau de Parfum? Have they created this box just for the splash? Um, was there a 50 mil version of this, a 100 mil version of this, or did they only release the 75 mil in the beginning? A lot of questions. I have to do my research because now that I've discovered this, I got to start digging even deeper. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you have and thumb up the video. And until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Bye.